Welcome and thank you for joining us here at Good Shepherd United Church of Christ, Sladington, as we pre prepare for our nation's Thanksgiving celebration. In our call for worship, if you were able to print out a bulletin, you'll notice that there is bold words. That is an invitation for you to respond. If you were not able to print out a bulletin, you may sim simply enjoy uh, listening to the words as they wash over you. Let us begin with our call to worship. To the thanksgiving table of plenty. Come, thankful people, come. To the kitchen, where familiar hands prepare the meal with love. Come, thankful people, come. To the farm, where calloused hands plant and tend. Come, thankful people, come. To the rich earth, where roots stretch and seeds grow. Come, thankful people, come. To the homes more subdued because of COVID. Come, thankful people, come. To this service of worship and praise of the God of creation. Come, thankful people, come. Amen. Amen. Let us make our confession known before God. So, so earth, earth creation, we admit that we are not sure where all our food comes from. We do not always know who prepared it or whether those who grow and prepare our food have enough food themselves. To you, who created each of us by hand, we confess that we do not always care for our bodies, that we sometimes eat what is easy rather than what is healthy, and that in doing so, we have disrespected your gifts to us. Help us to appreciate the good food you have provided for us, Heighten our awareness of the ways we benefit from labor in farm and factory. Remind us of the miracle that brings us nourishment each day, and make us truly thankful today and every day. Amen. Whether gathered or scattered, God's everlasting faithfulness reaches out to each and every one of us to give us hope for a better harvest in the changing seasons of our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us share in words of affirmation. I believe that God, the source of all life, has created all people on earth, a rich diversity of colors and cultures, with no people superior to another. I believe that God promised land a place for each people to dwell, to sustain and celebrate in peace with all creatures. I believe that in Jesus Christ, God became flesh, becoming one with creation and one with all human life. I believe that this same Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross, suffers when people are massacred or oppressed as less than other humans. I believe that through the cross, God still reconciles people to God, people to the good land, and people to each other. I believe that the Spirit of God dwells in this creation, is present in all the lands of earth, renews the life and spirit of all things, and calls all peoples to discover and celebrate God's presence. This I believe. Our scripture reading for this service comes from the Gospel of John, the 6th chapter, the 35th verse. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious one, I ask that you might speak now, that we might have ears ready to listen, that you might give us eyes prepared to see the miracles and the love you place before us, that you give us hearts that are full of compassion and empathy. Gracious one, we ask that you might do this so that we might follow us in the ways of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For it's in that name we pray. 
Amen. So I know that there are a number of people that are busy in the kitchen. They are preparing a meal, a feast, that they might be able to enjoy with their family that gathers. I know this Thanksgiving is going to be different for a lot of people because some people aren't able to travel. Some people are going to be staying at home, and it's going to be a more simple meal. But I hope that while we gather, we don't forget the central uh, principle of this holiday, to remember that God is with us always. So the question is, what sustains us? What sustains us on the journey? What sustains us in our very being? And Jesus said it. I am the bread. I am the bread. It's a simple substance of all people around the world. Whether it's found in uh, white bread, whether it's found in rye, whether it's found in pumpernickel, whether it's found in rice cakes. These are all forms of feeding that people rely upon and that God promises through Christ. But yet this year, some people will go without. Some people struggle because they have nowhere to lay their head at night. Some people don't have clean water to just have a cool cup to refresh their thirst. But God says in Jesus, I am the bread of life. Those who believe in me will never be thirsty. You know why that is? Because if we truly respond to Jesus' call, we will share our bread. We will offer that cup of cool water. We will reach out to those who are struggling and in need. We will treat others that are in that space the way we would want to be treated if we were in that space. And when we do that, we begin to make a change, a difference, and we're able to see the love of God in work, in the work that we offer in his precious name, that Jesus is Lord, and he is the reason we give thanks as Christians around the world to know that we are not alone. Even in this pandemic, in this time of turmoil within our country and around the world, we know that God is with us, each and every one of us, the hungry and the full, the rich and the poor, the people of color and the people with no color. We are one in Christ, and I pray that we might continue to reach out to one another as Christ has reached out to us. For this I pray in Jesus' name. And now we'll hear an anthem by our choir.
I want to thank Beth and the choir for their presentation. Uh, and I would invite us now into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious one, we turn to you this night that you might hear our prayers for all your people, especially our prayers of thanksgiving. For the clean air that's provided around the world, for the fresh water that rains down upon us or melts from the snow-capped mountains, we thank you for the ability to create shelter to protect us from the elements during the cold uh, months. We pray, O oh Gracious One, that you might hear our words of thanks for giving us the ability to work. And we pray that it might be something that is pleasing in your sight. And that it might be a way of helping others, unbeknownst to them. We thank you, God, that you have created us in a way that we might love others and that we might receive love from others. We greatly appreciate the family and the friends that uh, we call to be our family. I pray, O oh gracious one, though, that you hear our prayers this night, not just for us and all of our well-being and the things that we are thankful for, but I also ask that you might hear our prayers on behalf of those who don't have enough food to eat, who don't have shelter to protect them during this winter, that you might be with those who are homeless, who are unemployed, who are battling all kinds of adversity. I pray for those who are anxious, for those who are depressed. I pray for those who are battling addictions, trying to fill a void that they cannot fill. And I ask, O oh Gracious One, that you intercede with each and every one of these moments by sending into their lives people just like ourselves, that we might be a guiding angel. I pray, gracious one, that you hear our prayers for those of the world who are homebound, who are lonely, who are trying to struggle to know that they are worthy. I pray for those who are in the hospital or for those who are preparing for surgeries, for those who are convalescing and going through rehab, and they just don't know how to take that next step. They just don't seem to have the energy or the willpower. Gracious one, again, I pray you intercede for these individuals, that you might send social workers and health care providers to meet the needs so that all of your people might know that they are worthy and created in your loving image. I pray, gracious one, that you hear our prayers this night for those we remember, those who have entered into your glory, as well as friends and family that are not able to be with us during this Thanksgiving holiday. Help us to find ways of remembering a photograph, a phone call. Holy One, I also ask that you hear our prayers for your church, that we might continue to resonate with the heart of Christ, that others might see Christ in all of our actions, and all that we say and do. I pray that you be with our leaders, that they might continue to discern your will, that you be with our teachers, that you might make them good models and mentors to the young. I pray that you might be with those who continue to faithfully participate in the life of not only this congregation, but congregations around the world. And whether we are able to gather in person or if we have to go and worship at a distance, we know that you are there. This Thanksgiving, you give us the opportunity to participate in this worship service 
and still be able to get all the chores done, the house clean, the food prepared, the invitation sent, and the, the waiting for the arrival of those who we anticipate to be with us. Remind us though, that as we wait, you're already there in our homes and in our hearts. And for this, we are truly thankful. And so we join with all the saints that have gone before and the saints that are yet to come to pray the prayer your Son, our Savior, taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because of the support of so many, we are able to continue to share the good news of God's love. We are grateful for this opportunity and invite you to continue to answer God's call of service by responding financially by mailing a check through the Postal Service or using our Tidely app for electronic giving. Again, I thank you, the consistory thanks you, the people of Good Shepherd thank you for prayerfully considering what we are able to afford. And as we anticipate those gifts gathering, I invite us to join in this prayer of dedication. Thank you, God for the ability to recognize your gifts and to offer you thanks for your blessings. Help us to be thankful all year round and that these gifts we offer might be received by those who need them most. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as you go forth to celebrate Thanksgiving, may you continue to keep your eyes open and your ears peeled so that you might see and hear the goodness of God who swirls around us and within us. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you may be, now and forever. Amen.